Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Jordan and Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know. Jordan <laughs> and Keith from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Right. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast with Jordan and Keith and Mariano. There it is. <laughs> Let's follow that up. Yeah, there it is. It's a tough one to follow up, guys. Okay, so welcome back. Now we are doing another music podcast, something that we've been tending to do on this show for a while now. Uh, uh-huh. This one is going to be the Avid Brothers' True Sadness and Schoolboy Q's new album. Blank Face LP. Blank Face LP. Yes. So, uh, let's go into uh, the Avid Brothers <laughs> first. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, uh, True Sadness. So, I, I kind of described this, uh, them, uh, this is my first time hearing them, but they sounded to me like a, like an alt folk yeah, country yeah, yeah. blues rock band so yeah they're that's what folk i got because punk. this is my first time listening to them as well and it does seem a little bit folky yeah. almost a almost a hint of like rascal flatsy okay Ooh. you know okay. i'd like to point out that this album has a different tone to it than a lot of their others though okay oh so, um, so you're an avid van a vet on this i'm an avid avid brothers fan oh yeah. all right all right so pl- um, you tell well the last album they had uh things that seemed a bit slower they were a bit more uh you know more folk to their punk you know uh-huh and um as time's kind of going on here it it's kind of taken a different turn it's kind of um become a little bit more electric in a way it seems uh more processed but in a good way I think it works out really well, and it's really enjoyable to listen to. Yeah, it's a good record. I, I, I surprisingly, I didn't know what I didn't know what to expect. I had a feeling they might be kind of folky, but I wasn't sure. But like I said me to too. me, it had like an alternative folk rock blues feel to it. This, to I, it. I think, this album kind of went a little bit more alternative. I wouldn't even yeah. know what to call it. Though I'm struggling trying to think of. Well, I just the right the right term. I think I just said. <laughs> I, I guess alternative might work out. Too I said well. alt folk rock blues. <laughs> it, just, it just seems like the, there's uh, there's just something else that they've kind of done in this album that's a little bit special. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, I, that's the feel I got from it. So what were you saying, Mariano, about the album? Uh, I was saying that, well, I could have kind of guessed, too, that it was going to look a little, not look, I'm sorry, sound a little folky based on the look of the uh, album art. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did like it, though. I didn't dislike it. Uh, one of my favorite songs was, um, what's the Hollywood song? I'm so sorry. It was a... Uh, Fisher Road to Hollywood. I like that song. Okay. And right um, some of it, some of the songs were a little, little slow, but most of it was enjoyable for me. I thought that it, it sounded old school in a good way. Um, I like the folk. I like that alternative is, is taking a little bit of a folky kind of sound just because it's something different, you know, instead of it all sounding the same like it did for a good while. Um, you know, all of a sudden, like X Ambassadors and Twenty One Pilots, and all these people are doing some different things, and and I, I respect the, uh, you know, the branching out. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it was something that was definitely worth listening to. It was just, it was a fun, it was a fun listen for me. It was, um, I had a good time. I played it in a, on a, you know, a giant stereo, and everyone around me on the streets just all gathered around. It was just a big crowd. Oh, of people whatever, dude! <laughs> that made it very clear that they didn't know the Avid Brothers, but now uh-huh. they're going to go back and listen to their earlier stuff, <laughs> so much like what you guys it. are hinting. To. <laughs> yeah, me too. Fisher we just went to Hollywood. Was, was a lot of fun. Dancing, like, yeah, no. Powers. You know, Mariana was there. I, I'm sorry you didn't get the invite. Uh, yeah, I, I missed that memo. It was, it was just invite. kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah, I okay. loved Satan pulls the strings for me. That was a lot of fun right there. And the right. opening song, Ain't No Man. That's that was my also favorite song. A lot of Ain't fun. No Man was awesome. It set the tone for the album for Yeah, me. it definitely did. I like that. The Mama I Don't Believe. But I mean, they called the album True Sadness. And I mean, so when you're seeing this, I'm like, okay, well, is this going to be a really depressing album? But I didn't feel that way. It was very heartfelt. I mean, like I said, you know, they, what they did with folk and blues, they, 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 the, it was uh, intrinsically in, in, intertwined. It was nice. Yeah, it was, no, it didn't feel like. Um, I think the other albums that they've had, to me, it kind of had more of a melancholy feel than this uh-huh. one has. It's, right. They, it really did, and it's funny because this one does sound like, 
you know, true sadness, what you're expecting is going to uh-huh. be the Abbott brothers right after a breakup and then a funeral and then ice cream going fell on the floor. But it kind of it felt like it was uh, reveling in a sadness if it was it. It kind of felt like even if this, a tone of a song was a bit like uh, darker, mm-hmm. the um, the feeling of it was very still uplifting. That was still something that, you know, you're not succumbing to the dark, you know, tone in the song. You know, uh, yeah. like as far as lyrics wise, the beat right. the beat was way more uplifting than the lyrics. I think. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was cool. So it was, yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I like it. I mean, you could definitely tell they were going through some changes. So, but but you know, the best music that's that's ever written usually has that. You know, you know that type of authenticity to it, where you know they. You've gone through some things, and now it's time to sing and share about it. So I also want to mention, when I look at this cover for True Sadness, it, it, it's very reminiscent to me of two other covers. Um, and I, was, I wish you could see this. It's The Clash is uh, Give Him Rope. Give Him give Enough Rope. Yeah, yeah. And The Clash is Super Black Market Clash. That one right there. And the artwork is very similar. Very reminiscent. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Yeah, I, so, like, I like the artwork. It, it reminds me of... Oh, um, yeah, it's cool. No, mm-hmm. It reminds me of, of the old PlayStation game Frogger for some reason. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, yeah. didn't, didn't see that coming. This is like an yeah. e-plot test. It reminds I me know. of my mother, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I was just wondering, after I was looking at this cover art, I'm like, okay, maybe they have a brother's... Maybe they uh, are influenced by The Clash by looking at this record cover because the texture and the color of it... Yeah, it reminds me of those two albums. Like but, I said, there, there was a lot more folk in it. But you guys, this is your first time listening to yes. this, you know, the Avid Brothers. Do you think that you guys are going to be returning to this album? Well, yeah, definitely. I I, I enjoyed the record. Yeah. So you liked it beyond just the obligations of reviewing it? Yeah, I, I did. It also kind of reminded me a little bit of the Black Keys, a little bit. You know, I can see that. I and mean, this yeah. album, like I said, um, the earlier stuff, I haven't seen a lot like this. Uh-huh. This kind of felt like a reinvention, and it was definitely a successful one. But um, there, there are other stuff. It, it does feel a bit slower sometimes, and I guess it's um, I that just that. comes with sure. a lot more of the acoustics. This way. right, right. But what did you, what did you think, Mariano? Do you um, think that this is something you, know you can what? revisit? Uh, maybe I don't know yet. I I, I enjoyed it. It just um, you guys spend more time on it. There's just not too much that I do that like you know music is supposed to kind of enhance your day and there's not too much i do that like merits folky type music okay so you so just feel sure. like uh, but i did fair? but i did enjoy the album like like other than you know having to review it i'm i i'm glad i listened to it and i glad i'm glad that i know it's there for the uh, you know the weird day when i i'm feeling something folky i'll i'll go to the Abbott brothers well i feel like it's also an album where you might want to put a, a cup of tea on it or some coffee and sit down and read your paper or, you know, go online, look at the news or something. You know, uh, I yeah. feel like you're right. It, that's just a luxury. I don't really have these days. But like right. if I maybe if I'm, um, you know, doing one of the many projects that I've been working on, then I'll def- this is definitely good. Um, good music to do, like to listen to while you're doing stuff. But yes, I know last time we we said that like kind of in a negative sense. This time I mean it in a good way. I this agree. Me good, too. Like lifestyle background. I, music. I, yeah. And I also feel like it's. It's an album that has a serious, somber tone to it, but not so serious where you're depressed or anything. Yeah, no, it, I feel like it makes any sense. What I'm I saying? feel like it addresses the somber in your life and in everyday life, but it tackles it in a more um, relaxing kind of way. Relaxing, and also, yeah. like I said before, like that uplifting where yeah. it, it feels well, the way like that I would um, approach yeah. it would be like I feel like it just it gives a realistic sense of like gravity that life actually has, but. That doesn't mean that it's bad, you know. It just means that it's it's just aware. Oh yeah, but ain't no man. It's my jam, Mama. I don't believe no hard feelings. I mean, just when you look, at, yeah, it, it, it's a good record. I feel like the I, entire I album, I, there was yeah. not a song that I just kind of passed through. Not yeah, it's, it's a good record. So, so Mariano, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate this album? Um, are we going like for every album ever, or like full key albums? Well, I mean, just as a as a good album or a bad album, yeah, as an album that you uh, would recommend okay. to somebody or not. All right. Well, in and of itself, it was yes. a good album. Everything from the album art to the songs to the sound, everything I enjoyed. There was no there was no part of any song that I thought like, okay, the lyrics are weak or the it's missing right. this or it's missing that. Right. Yeah. It was so good. so what's your, so what's your ranking? <laughs> 
So my ranking then would be, let's say, like a solid uh, eight. Okay. I right felt on. eight. I, I feel like our review system is um, is a seven through uh, ten kind of review system with a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you're going to give it an eight too, Jordan? Give it a nine. I give it a 9.5. I had a lot of fun. And uh, this is something that I feel like it's going to be a classic as far as things that I listen to. This is something that I'm going to keep coming back to probably, you know, for years now. I think the more I listen to it, the more I'm going to appreciate it as well. I'm going to give it a nine. And if well. I could recommend, probably not to you, Mariano, because well, folk music just isn't your type of thing. I mean, Avid Brothers just won't do it. But I think, Keith, I, I think you should go back and revisit some of their stuff. Even after this, I can show you some things I think you okay. might like. Sure. They're definitely um, sure. they're definitely a band worth giving a try to in this album, especially. Well, this was something. definitely a folk hybrid, so it wasn't like a typical so-called folk record. It was definitely a hybrid, and that's what made it work. I mean, yeah. they, they fused the elements very well: folk, blues, an alternative rock sound. It was all fused very well to me, so I, I, I dug that. So, okay, well, right on. So uh, we're all in agreement. We recommend this album. It's a good album. Um, yeah, it's a good, like, somber, reflective record. If you want something that's serious, but not too serious, but but serious in a relaxing way, which is something we never really say, actually, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, get this record, right? Serious in a relaxing yeah. way. I think that's, I that's a good way to put yeah. it, and that's yeah. something that you don't find a lot. So. Yeah, I, I agree. So right on, the Avid Brothers. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, Jordan, what we got up next? We are going to be doing Schoolboy Q. All right. And are you ready for that, Mariano? I'm ready. I All right. Is, yeah. Love the commercials. Love them. Ha. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hi, everybody. Schoolboy Q's net worth is $1.3 million, but is his new album, Blank Face LP, as rich as his bank account? Find out <laughs> from this review. All right. Okay. How's that, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that, that sounds that was a little different. low to me. Like, I would think after this album came out, just touring, he'll make another, like, at least a million dollars. You think so? By <laughs> the end of the tour. Well, hopefully, And then the album yeah. sales. So Schoolboy Q. He probably needs to do a lot more touring. So Yeah. So, Mariana, what were you going to say about school, Schoolboy Q and his background? Well, well, you know, my thing is is I like that. I like that kind of depending on where the rappers are from, you can hear a little bit of the culture. And uh, Schoolboy Q, he's from South Central. He's another L.A.-based rapper. Okay. And you know what? For me, it's a little hard to tell because he has more of like an Atlanta sound to me. More of like a slower, gritty, like... Okay. Uh, yeah, I can see some almost, of that with the trap with the trap music in the background. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I he's part of that group, uh, Black Hippie. You know, Kendrick Lamar, Absol, yes. J Rock. Yes. And um, he, I really liked Oxymoron, which is the previous album. I'm not so sure about this one though. It it should have been, in my opinion, way better than it was because I'm looking through the track list and he had Kanye West, he had Jadakiss on an album, and Jadakiss killed it. Kanye's verse was a little weak. He had yes. E Forty. Yes. He even had the dog pound, and he, he kind of ruined that one as well. It, to <laughs> me, it should have been a lot better than it was. Okay. All right. So, wow. There, there it is, Mariana, right off the, straight, out, straight out of South Central. So you're <laughs> disappointed, Mariana, is what you're trying to tell us. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was saying for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just, just trying to piece all that together. See, I didn't mind it. I mean, I, I don't think this was was the best. I'm probably going to forget about it. And I'm probably not going to revisit it, uh, with the exception of maybe a couple songs outside of this review. But it wasn't really for me. That that wasn't really. I was kind of a letdown. You see what I'm saying? It, it, the problem is not, like, I didn't mind it. But the problem isn't that it was super terrible. The problem is exactly that. It was it was just an album that came out this year. The and, you know, mm -hmm. again, I looked up other people's reviews of this album. Stop it. And you're cheating. <laughs> and they praised it. No, no, no. They praised it like it was, like it was the best thing 
you know no, they said it was better than oxymoron and i disagree they said it was it was like three different people said it was like one of the best albums to come out this year so far i strongly disagree to that it, yeah. it was just like all right yeah i disagree well now that, that other too. people like it i think i like it too <laughs> no yeah, i um funny. it and just I've, it was I've, it was I've just heard, unimpressive i've heard so much better from schoolboy q i'll put I, it that way uh, I, I, look uh, here's what I, what I think about it, and, and I agree with you guys. I think we may be reaching the trifecta of this podcast. So, <laughs> um, the production was great. Um, lyrically speaking, I liked some of it, and I didn't like some of it. Um, I think he's inconsistent. The problem I have with a lot of hip hop artists today, uh, one thing first and foremost, it's unfortunate that we, you know, the rappers use the B word so much they think it's normal and they've become desensitized to it. And that's an issue for me. Um, way too much of that, way too much misogyny on this record. There's some stuff I did like. Uh, you know, that part is like a guilty pleasure, but I agree with you, Kanye West first is the weakest part of that track. Um, yeah. I like Groovy Tony slash Eddie Kane. I like that a lot. Um, I thought that was real cool. Um, I did not like by any means at all. That was kind of a, that was offensive to me. Uh, I, I didn't like that part. Yeah, and I know you just said that, but he says that too much. You know that part, that part. Like, it's it, annoying, it just, but it's kind of catchy at the same time. It's like it's done on purpose, like an evil insidious plan to stick in your head. But go ahead. So well, it just it just seemed it just seemed like jv to me like he should have done yes. a lot better than that yeah, no I'm there i have no legitimate reason for liking that song but i do so i, I i'm agreeing with you <laughs> it's that song was my guilty pleasure because i did not want to like that song and i didn't at first but i couldn't get it out of my head today so it kind of got on my nerves and yeah there was <laughs> a couple songs like that that i think i'm going to return to but as the album overall overall in its entirety i'm going to look yeah. back on this as something that i think could have um, been better it had a few songs that i wish were in an album with yeah. other better songs yeah but the, things no, felt like lacking yeah, the production was good but lyrically it's too inconsistent i think he has potential to be a great lyricist i saw i saw sparks of that with like overtime the blank face song black thoughts john muir i like that i even like dope dealer with e40 but like i said did not like by by any means that was very offensive to me um yeah and then so yeah, I guess that part I can take or leave. Actually, I like it. I like it, and I don't like it. So, but and Torch was cool. But yeah, it's just yeah. Lyrically, I, I want to see him grow. You know, there's a reason why Kendrick Lamar is the star from this group. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> so. I, I can see that too. But I, and I agree with you. I mean, compared to Kendrick Lamar, it's it's really hard to compare at all. I well, mean, and and they're bandmates, and you know, well, it's really hard to compare most other. people to Kendrick Lamar, but. But Schoolboy Q, uh, but they're bandmates, like, so that's why there's a legitimate comparison. Yeah, no, I, and I know what you mean. It's just, um, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. like on top of the actual lyrics, just the tonality was a little boring too. Okay, you know, like his his cadences were also just not there. But again, they're not terrible. Like this album, it's I don't I don't like dislike it, but it's just it's not great, you know. And yeah. uh, Schoolboy Q, I, I just expected a little more. Hip hop artists. So it's a bit of a letdown. It's not just enough to give me great production. I need great lyrics too. Yeah, well, I mean, this is don't just give me know? great it's, production. Give me good it's, lyrics it's, too. It's all about the content. It's supposed to be. So, like I said, yeah. he, when he when he wants to paint a good story, he can he can do that. There were songs on here that were great, Actually, but there were songs you, on here I, that I were horrible. He does do that, but just not <laughs> enough, you know. Yeah, yeah no, I, <laughs> huh? I mean, was there any song the that Jadikus stood out to you great. guys? Well, yeah, the uh, the Groovy Tony. Is that the is that, is that the track of Jadakiss? I can't remember. But yeah, I, that, that's, yep. uh, yeah, that's that a great track. track. That's a great track. I mean, I like that. Like I said, Torch is cool. Um, and what was I saying? What about that part with, uh, with well, we Kanye West? That. Yeah. yeah. So that that I, I like that song, and I don't like that song. And Kanye's verse is the weakest on that song. I can so that, that song yeah. is like my guilty pleasure. I, 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 there's no perfect reason for me to like that song at all, and I kind of do if that makes any sense. So, but. But that's one of his weaker songs, though. The John Muir song is good. Like I said, the uh, the Black Thoughts song, the Blank Face song with Anderson Pack, that's a good track. And Overtime is cool too. But like Tuki, you're knows, naming a good bit of songs right now. Huh? Yeah, but Tuki knows part two, the last yeah. track. I didn't care for that at all. It's all about 
gang banger. I don't like that. No. And what, did you already say, what did you think about Dope Dealer with E-40? I like that song. Yeah, me E-40 too. E-40 killed it on that. I, I like think that. so. Yeah, so I, I, I do like the, the, the diversity of people he put on the record. Like I said, yeah, yeah, I think... The features were great. And yeah. it's funny when we talk about this, I'm, I'm realizing that there were quite a few songs that did stand out to me, even more than I originally thought when we got into this podcast. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't change the fact that the overall impression of the album was just initially, it didn't... The good songs didn't weigh, um, you know, weigh up against the he bad. He could do better. I yeah. think Schoolboy Q is a he. He's he a talented rapper. I and think like so I said, too. I look forward to seeing him grow lyrically and do more. But I'm telling, I'm telling them all. You know, it's not just enough to have good production. You have to come with the lyrics. And you this know? doesn't necessarily change my opinion of Schoolboy Q. This is. This album doesn't lower sure. because I you still sure. see potential of what who he is. And, well, yeah, like I said, he's a good it. rapper. Like I said, like I said, the songs I like, I love. But like I said, you know, we have to stop being desensitized and we have to stop with the misogyny and the, and the lyrics, thinking that's okay and it's normal. It's 2016, and I'm just, you know, I, you know that that's what that's what prevents me from giving someone a perfect rating for a rap album. Is that so? So I got to say, I'm done with that. So. <laughs> Okay, Mariano, you there? I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I'm not for misogyny, but I understand that this. <laughs> he's not. yeah. No, I, I think it's safe to say all of us against misogyny. <laughs> yes, go but, ahead. But he's. Um, I understand that. Like, it's just a reflection of of his upbringing, and you know. And I'm fine with people kind of displaying their personal ideas. It's it's his album. I just, I just thought that the stories, the interesting stories that I'm sure he has, could have been crafted with better lyrics, better cadences. The production was good. You got you're right. I liked the you know, I liked all the beats and I, I really liked both the beats, you know, with him and Jadakiss. I think Jadakiss that was my favorite song on that album. Oh, that's a great track. Um, yeah. Yeah, Groupy Tony, Eddie yeah. Kane. Yes. Um but it just wasn't enough for me. I hear you. I was like, expecting a lot more. I, I I agree, but I mean, there. I, I, like I said, I do like parts of the record. I do. So I'm going to go back now and listen to Oxymoron. So so yeah, I can, yeah. So I, uh, I prefer Oxymoron. So because Oxymoron was a lot better, I'll stay tuned for the next album. All right. So I'm going to go back and revisit that record. But okay. So um, on a scale of 1 to 10, Jordan, what do you give it? Um, I'm going to give it a 6. Okay. Yeah. Or no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it a six because there were still songs that I did really like about it, but it doesn't change that the ones I didn't like, I really didn't like enough to let that take over my, my whole impression of the album, really. Mariano? I'm going to give it a six, too, because while, it again, it wasn't terrible, I consider it like the NBA. Like, sure, they're all professionals, but with that being said, if you can't, if you don't stand out, then you're, you know... None of the greats have albums that that just kind of fall in line with with all the other. This is like if hip hop was an archetype in a movie where people were making fun of hip hop. You know, mm-hmm. it was overly bland, overly misogynist. Like it, it was just nothing special about it. Nothing too bad, but nothing special. So it was just another album to me. So I'll okay. give it a six. I'm going to give it a six, too. So there you have it, folks. Uh, unfortunately, that's six, six, six right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. six, uh, so we're six, six, six. We're all giving it sixes. Is this the trifecta you were looking for, Keith? It wasn't, but that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, but that's what happened. Okay, so. well, so I guess this was this is kind of an unholy album. We, <laughs> we should probably cut to commercial and reevaluate our lives and what we've been doing on the show. When we come back, we'll do our wrap-up. I agree. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys soon. Yes. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey. 
Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the GSMC Music Review Podcast with Jordan Mariano and Keith. And we just finished up with uh, Schoolboy Q's The Blank Face LP. And now we're doing the wrap-up with that and uh, Abbott Brothers' True Sadness. Yes. So I guess we'll get started with our uh, infamous little questionnaire. Okay. Now, I'm sorry, I forget. <laughs> what, what rating on a scale of 1 to 10 did both of you guys give the Avid Brothers? I, must say I gave nine. it a I gave it a nine I think yeah ninety nine and we gave it eights I think yeah I, I gave it a nine I I loved the album I nine point oh. five it was really good and it's yeah I gave it a nine it. he gave it a nine point five and what did you give it Mariano I gave it an eight okay okay yeah so yeah so what did we give the Schoolboy Q album we all gave it sixes bro all right let's well, we point <laughs> yes. out that we didn't mean to do that and I think that just kind of stumbled out <laughs> yes. Please, you yeah, know what? Say that again. Yes, we did not mean to do that. It just kind of it did just stumble out. So that's that's all we're saying. That was completely a coincidence. <laughs> Very. So go ahead, Mariano. What are you about to say? You know what? Though I'm glad that like now that we bring up the other album, I think I know better how to describe my problem with the Schoolboy Q album. Please do bring it on. And that was the Avid Brothers. It was a very good album for what it was. Like amongst the folky kind of punky albums that I've heard, mm-hmm. it was good. Schoolboy Q, amongst the newer kind of trappy hip hop albums that I've heard, it was just meh. Like mediocre, basically, what you're saying. Exactly, mediocre, forgettable. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, there's so much of it out these days that that if you don't stand out, you you know, it you're just kind of lost, and it, it just it didn't stand out. And it's and crazy. That's not enough for me for yeah. someone who signed someone of this caliber. Right. Right, because he's a good rapper, and you can hear, like I said, there's songs on here that are great, and you can see his talent, but it's just not consistent. And the problem is, too, like a lot of times in this industry, people depend so heavily on production. That, and, and, and for a lot of people, that's what all it takes is having a good beat. A lot of people don't even care about lyrics. They just want to hear yeah. a good beat. So, you know, in that case, he, he, he gets flying colors. For production, it, and that's yeah, that's what yeah. I meant in the beginning when I said he sounded more like an ATL rapper because mm-hmm. they they focus more on like gritty beats. Think Paul Wall, yes, uh, yes, you know, mm-hmm. something like that, something that's more beat heavy, more bass heavy, right, right, yeah. So his production was great, but like I said, but I, you know, I, I need more than that, and you do too. Sounds like all of us do, but yeah. yeah. So you know, I look forward to seeing what he does next. I think lyrically. He has to, you know, the, the the talent and potential to be a great lyricist. But you know, I I, I want I want to see that. I'm not I'm not going to just settle. That's all I, you know. I'm not going to just settle. So, right. I know he can rap. I've heard his yeah. freestyles. His freestyles killed this album. I, I, yeah. So yeah, I I'll bet. stay tuned in. Okay. So so yeah, Jordan. Uh, um, mm-hmm. Just Matt on that, but Avid Brothers. I think it was truly a great album. Um, that's something I'm going to keep coming back yeah. to. Ironically, true sadness was true greatness. <laughs> True sadness can be true greatness in a lot of situations. Well, yeah, and blank face really was a blank face. Huh? Who knew? <laughs> I, I know, right? It really but, was. Yeah, but that's the irony to these things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and we didn't plan that. That just happened. You know, we're you know, that's freestyling Can't off the dome. stress that enough. You know? Yeah, yeah, really. So, but I'm um, so, you know, trifecta again, you know, the first time for us, this, this podcast. On the island, uh, you got the Avid Brothers, you know, True Sadness or Schoolboy Q's Blank Face LP. True which, Sadness, yeah. yeah. True Sadness. Yep. Mariano? This is the first time I've ever chosen against a hip-hop album, but I'm going to go with True Sadness. Me too, True Sadness. And the irony is, is we're going with True Sadness. Listen to that term which on I, a lonely island. <laughs> I feel like on the lonely island, True Sadness would be way more uplifting, though. I mean, Right? <laughs> That's the irony. The yeah. album is very misleading. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. So it's encouraging. I'd say. I'd yeah. say the album is encouraging to sadness. Well, it's like, it's like, like, like we said earlier. You know, it might, it might be my first serious, relaxing record <laughs> that you ever heard. Or? Yeah, you know, really? in, that, in, in that context. You know, that's, uh, that's so good. I'm, I'm yeah. so glad you're you're excited about this album yeah, too. So, yeah. So we look forward to seeing more from Schoolboy Q and see when he does. Seeing more from the Avid Brothers. And once again, you know, Schoolboy Q, like you said earlier, he's from Black Hippie. You know, that's the band he has with Kid Nickel Mars. You said before J Rock and Ab Soul. So right, you know, they have mixtapes. You know, from L A. Right. Um, so, I'd like to see something between uh, Kendrick Lamar and YG. Hmm, okay. They're both Compton rappers, and they, to me, will be the ones carrying uh, the West Coast. Okay. Because this was not that great. Okay, well, you may be right. So, you know, we'll have to find out. But I will. I was going to say, I still want to lobby for a Black Hippie record. 
you know, official record with all four to see. I want to see them all shine together. I could definitely get behind that. Yeah. So yeah, I could get behind that as well. Yeah. So you know, the, yeah. So we want to see what they can do because they're they're label. I mean, they're label mates, they're teammates, team members, band members f- for a reason. So, but yeah. So I, I, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. So we all we're all in agreement. Avert Brothers, everyone pick that up. You'll like it. It's a good record. True Sadness. And School Board Q, if you like dope production and you're not really carried, worried about the lyrics, buy it. But if you like dope production and you want some good lyrics that last with you, then no, don't get it. So. And also, if you're not so much into the mechanics of, of wordplay for lyrics, if you're not so much into the rapping of rap, but you can relate. Like, you know, I'm sure people in South Central love this, you know? Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people you know, like it. So The relatability factor for somebody in the similar lifestyle, uh, I think it's worth a, worth a buy. Sure. But I will say this, though. Even though there are lots of people who have that relatability in regards to how they portray, you know, their surroundings, women, sometimes eventually that gets cliche and formulaic. So eventually that becomes a cliche. So, well, it does, but but so, to and us, that's the problem. Know, maybe not to somebody. But it's 2016. Way, it's yeah. not the first time we've heard some you know rappers had that tone with women. Like I said, that's my big complaint about the YG record. It's the same type of thing. Is that I like the YG record, but that's what I don't like about the YG record. So I'll, I'll, right. I look forward to seeing you know these rappers get older or just mature with their lyrics. You don't have to even be older. I mean, because Kendrick is, you know, he's a young rapper with great lyrics for the most part. So, yeah, I just want to see what happens when people take their lyrical game and just step it up and evolve with it when they have more right. experiences. Hip-hop needs, hmm? hip-hop needs uh, some evolution. Definitely. Lyrically. Not production-wise, because it's already above everybody else, ironically. But lyrically, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks again for listening. And Jordan, you have anything you want to say to us? Yeah. You guys can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, SoundCloud, um, MySpace, Friendster. No. No. Okay. No. Just making sure. <laughs> iTunes, um, <laughs> Google Play, and gsmcpodcast.com. Right so, on. Once again, I'm Jordan. And I'm Keith. And I'm Mariano. And thanks again for listening. We appreciate all of you. And uh, we'll see you somewhere out in space. All right. Sounds good. Yep.